Hello, Jane. And we're Spiel Mail. That's who we are. And we are on to our second shelf tour. Uh, we did one you can find on our channel of our games at the beginning of the alphabet um, and our special collections, which is our favorite de designers. And now we're on to this one, which I think is actually probably going to be one of the smaller sections um, in our tour. But do you want to go ahead and get us started on the top row? Because I can't reach up there. I do, but first, as I mentioned, I want to say hello to our new subscribers. Yes. We've got several new subscribers. Hi, so thank welcome. you for following. Thanks for following, and hopefully you enjoy these videos. And also a shout out to T and Games. Uh, she actually was it has a channel that we love where she drinks tea and goes through the games that they've played recently, her and her husband. Um, it is a very cozy channel. We find it super relaxing and fun to listen to her talk about games. And she was really gracious and emailed us a couple times while we were um, busy with the move. And uh, you should check out her channel. Yep, she's wonderful. Yep. All right, so we're going to get to the games now. Uh, so first, we're going to start off with a classic in our series of Carcassonne games. This is Carcassonne the City, which is probably our favorite. It's a little meatier than Carcassonne and uh, the base game, and uh, it's just really neat. You build a city wall, and it looks really cool, too, when you're done. Um, we had a couple versions, and we got rid of some because we decided we probably didn't need them all. Yep, and we have the expansion Hills and Sheep. And then we also have uh, the Winter Edition, which I know Teen Games had as well when they were doing their video about Winter Games. So uh, this is also one of our favorite Winter Games. It's yes. perfect for the winter, for Christmas season two. Jane gave that to me early on when we were dating. It was the first Carcassonne uh, copy I own, so it has a place in my heart. And we've been very pleased with Miss Over Carcassonne, the cooperative version of Carcassonne. This is actually really good. Um, it's pretty tough though, so if you don't like tough cooperative, maybe not for you, but it is pretty good. Okay, and then we have Cascadia, which is part of the Cascadia, Calico, uh, Verdot series of games from Flat Out Games. Very, very, very good game, and I believe it's Build a Jar winner, right? Yep. So, um, so what do we have here? I don't even know what this is. What is this, Jen? I have no idea. It's big. Oh, it's Carnival Zombie. <gasps> and we have not played it yet. Oh, it looks Hence so good. the reflection though. off the shrink wrap. Um, but this is a big one that we're very excited to get to. And then we have Cartographers, which we've played like a hundred times. <laughs> so here's the contrast. Castell, which we've heard good things about. I know the Brothers Murph are big fans of this. Uh, and we haven't played it yet. So but we're excited. Now we have a hole here for something. Uh, I don't know what. But presumably we have a game, we have a list of our games and we put the games in. We left holes for games. I'm not sure what that is for, that we're still in boxes. So it's possible there's one game still in a box. Uh, but then we have, the, I'm not even gonna bring this down, I'm just gonna turn it. The Castles of the Mad King Ludwig. And uh, we have both the regular version and the colossal version, which is giant pieces. Mm -hmm. Because why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. And then we have Kylas. Which Kylas, there's another version of Kylas, uh, which I haven't played, but Kylas is such a good game. It's such an excellent game. But a bit uh, on the heavier, more complex end. So um, then if you want to go more simple, a simple game that's a lot of fun, and I can't get it out, <laughs> is Chai, um, the Chai Tea Game. This is a good game about tea, so if you're, you know, drinking tea, play some chai. Um, and then one of our, we had a real blast playing tr through Charterstone, which is a legacy game from Stonemaier Games. Really good fun. Really enjoyed this one. Yes, we did. Um, naming all the different things. And so on and so forth. Jen's looking at her watch like I'm taking too long. Okay. No, my stress monitor just went off and told me that I'm experiencing <laughs> stress overload. Well, that's not good. Now, this is one we really got to get the table Chocolate Factory. Um, what a good looking game, and I've heard good things. It's from Matthew Dunstan, which designs really good games. So, we got to do that. Yeah, we do. And last but not least, this one was very pleasant surprise. When we get a chance, we try to uh, support like Indian designers or international designers. And this is a designer from India. 
and this is a really uh, fun abstract game. It's a little bit clunky, I guess, but um, the fun way outweighs the clunkiness. So to speak. yeah, and uh, like you said, it's a design about India by an India's Indian. Indian designer, woman designer, which we really like to support when we're uh, looking at games to back. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's that shelf. We decided since I'm taller, I would do the top shelf. So sorry if that was a lot of me, but now off the gym. All right. Continuing with our C games, Christmas tree. Um, this is, if you want a good Christmas game, this is really great, except that the, the cards are diamonds and they're really hard to shuffle. So woo. Um, and then we've got our Chronicles of Crime section here. Um, we really enjoyed this game. We've only played a couple of times, but we love these sort of like mystery solving games. And um, this one, it's app assisted. It's really, really fun. So um, I can't wait to dig into the Chronicles of Time. So they've got somewhere they happen either in the past or future, which I am super geeked about. We've got Chronicle X. Now, this is a bit of a controversy. This was a Kickstarter that I backed early on before I really knew what I wanted out of games. And I was just kind of excited to back something. And it took a super long time to fulfill. And people were, like, really upset about it. Um, it did finally fulfill. The reviews aren't great, but sometimes that's what happens when there's, like, a controversy around a game is that um, you get a lot of people that are just pissed off and they give negative comments. So we'll, we'll try it. We'll play it and see how it goes. Um... Then I'm gonna move over. We've got all three of these games are Circadians, uh, Circadians First Light, and then a couple of um, uh, expansions. Um, this is by, help me out here, dear. Uh, it's related to, but well, it's Shem Phillips, but it's not Shem Phillips. It's, it's, like, it's Sam, Sam McDonald. McDonald, who designs a lot of the games from uh, Garfield Games with Shem Phillips. But this is his own project. Yeah, really, really like this one. Oh my God, it's so good. Loved it, yeah. Um, city Builder, City Council, City Hall are three city games. Um, we played City Council. No. No. We haven't we played, played City Builder. We played City Builder, which was actually had a really interesting scoring system. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it is right now, but I really liked it. Um, that one was off of Kickstarter. Oh, we have more city games. City of Kings. I'm not going to pull this out. This is a big one with lots of different pieces. And again, like, our shelves are packed and we have a lot of games, but when we do things like condense our circadians and condense City of Kings, we're going to get a little bit more room. So we're kind of excited about that. It's pushing us actually to play some of these big bad boys because uh, we want to get them condensed. And I'm so excited. I can't wait to play that. And we currently have Merchant's Cove in the table for that very reason. Exactly. We played Vindication um, last week, which was chef's kiss. Freaking amazing. Um, so that we could condense it down. Um, here we have, this one I really love. This is Clax. This is a Discworld board game. So if you're a fan of Terry Pratchett, this one's actually kind of hard to get. It's an okay game. It's not super fantastic, but it's pretty good. And I love Terry Pratchett. So this was uh, definitely a keeper and one we're excited to have. We had um, Clank, but we got rid of it because we have... We played through the legacy, so we're only going to keep one version of Clank. We like it. It's just not um, like our top. I don't know if it's going to be in my top 100. It might be, um, but it's not going to be top 50 for sure. So we kept the legacy version. This is the one we played and we put together um, ourselves. And then Clans of Caledonia, finally, um, uh, which for some reason I always think is like an Uwe game. It just looks like it is that pastoral feel. Um, yeah, so that rounds off that shelf. I'm playing that right now on Board Game Arena. Oh, great. Well, you can teach it to me oh, next. I'm very excited. All right, next shelf. All right. I'm going to make some adjustments to the camera. And fix clacks because you put it in backwards. <laughs> and it was bothering me. I was watching and I was like, oh, I won't say anything. Yes. I'm going to adjust my shirt. Oh, wait, I have to be tall enough to see my face. You want a chair? Like uh, we get the force? Next shelf. Next shelf. Okay. Yep. I can lower this. No, it's good. It's perfect. I'm going to stand over here then. Well, now we're on to the next shelf. Now this is a, a doozy. We really got to get to the table. It's really beautiful. And that is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. You can't see much with the box, but it is a doozy. Um, another one that we need to get to the table. So our shelf of opportunities taken over for the moment. 
but Clinic Deluxe. Um, and we have the base game with all these different expansions and we really are excited to check it out. It's uh, Alvin Viard, I, I guess is how you say it, I hope. And um, uh, his games tend to be a bit more complex and mathy and stuff like that. So, which I'm going to really like. But... <laughs> I do. too. All right. I'm not going to win, but I'm going to like it. <laughs> then we have Codenames Pictures. And behind it, we hid Codenames Duet. We really like Codenames Duet. Yeah. And actually, that's Codenames Duet plus all of the cards and stuff from Codenames Regular. We just consolidated it to, to limit the number of boxes we have. And we really only ever play Codenames Duet. Um, even if we have multiple people, we do the Teams version. Yep. It's true. Uh, next up, we have a great, great solo game, Coffee Roaster. So... If you like solo games, this is one that plays really quick and you basically play three quick successive games and then tally your score between the three. Um, it's a bag builder, so if you're in a bag building, it's cool. Um, it is a nice little solo game, really like that one. And then we have another game, I think this one is just really underrated and that is Coloma. It's about the uh, town of Coloma where the gold rush started and it is so good, it's got such a cool, uh, uh, rondell it's the word that's the word i was looking for the other day <laughs> <laughs> that word is escape is uh i don't know it's just hard to grasp but um anyway it's got a cool rondell and um you can you can possibly do two actions but if you don't make a choice a good choice you end up doing only one anyway it's really cool um so then we have the colonists which we haven't played um but we are excited for uh, we definitely love these kind of uh, civilization games. Um, we do wish that the uh, spirits were able to kick the colonists out in the end, but you know, that is what Spirit Island is here for. Uh, <laughs> I want, this has been on my shelf of opportunity for a long time, and that's Coliseum. I think part of the issue is, does it require three players? It does. It requires three players, so that's part of the challenge. Um, but we are set up here to have more people uh, in as guests. And so we expect to get games like this to the table. And I see I'm getting light reflection off of it. And if you're in Pittsburgh, just let us know. Come on over. <laughs> Come on over. Um, you want to take over? Sure. Uh, Common Sharia uh, is a GMT game. Now listen, this is a war game and it is not our normal type of game. It's also a solo only game. We still usually play those with two, but the subject of this um, was so unique that we really had to get this. And we still haven't played it yet, but because um, we got it, you know, right about the beginning of the time when Jane got really sick. So, yeah, so because and if you're new to us channel, I got really sick for several years and uh, I still sick, but uh, I'm much, much better than I was. She and can stand. <laughs> I couldn't play games for a while at all. So, yeah. um, but we kept buying them. <laughs> well, so that's why you see Kickstarter's a, coming yeah. in, and and so that's why we have a lot of games on our shelf of opportunity compared to most people. Yeah. So. And just uh, just a, a recommendation: if you do know anybody that is bed bound or um, chair bound, really sick, we do have a whole series on how to play games, um, how to adapt gaming for that. Um, then we've got Concordia Venus, also on our shelf of opportunity. Um, you know, it's supposed to be a great game, really looking forward to it. And I'm going to pull this out because this is one that you don't see a lot of. This is consumption, food, and choices, and it was designed by a dietitian. Um, I'm really excited to play this. We had it on our list. We were going to play it last year, and, um, you, just, you know, Jane had a crash, and we weren't able to get it to the table. So, um, we're hoping now that those are happening less and less, that this is when we'll get to the table. We have Copenhagen, which has a special place in our heart because we went to Copenhagen on our honeymoon. Um, and it's a fun tile-laying polyomino game. Um, you can play, is a regular one on BGA or is it just the roll and write? Um, it's a regular it's one. It's a regular one, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, we had to adjust the camera because I was just wandering off into the corner not realizing it. We have Core Space, I'm not gonna take it out. It's big and chunky. I honestly don't even remember what it is, but it is on our shelf of opportunity. Pretty sure it was a Kickstarter that we backed that came in during the, the dark years. Creature Comfort, game that we've talked about a lot. A lot of people love it. It's from the Kids Table Board Game. And then Crescent City Cargo, um, also in Shrimp. 
And Creature Comforts is a really good, it's really good fall game because it's about winter preparation. But I also think it's a really good winter game because a lot of the stuff are yeah. winter items like Cozy. mitts and uh, Ice skates fire and and yeah, yeah. It's, it's all. And it's a very stuff. welcoming game. It's one you can play with non-gamers and it's pretty easy to grasp. Um, I mean, for them, it'd probably be a little bit of a stretch, but it's easy enough that they can get it. And it's super cute artwork and fun to play. Be a good step up game for yeah. somebody. Well, one of the games that we expect to get to the table really soon is uh, Capers, Crimes and Capers, which uh, we are really into murder games and murder TV. And so we're excited for this. And it's kind of like a one-off. Once we solve it, it'll be done. And uh, so this we're, that's why I want to get it to the table soon, because we're trying to clear up room in our library. We still have Kickstarters coming in and we're kind of full. So we're kind of, we're, we're in a one in, one out mode. Yep, absolutely. So, Plus, we have some really nice dice towers and stuff I wish we could put on the shelves, and right now we can't. Yeah, I don't want to pull them all out, but which like I've been doing, but Crown of Amara is a great, great game. We have not played this in a while, but it's so good. And who always wins it? And who's undefeated is Jim. <laughs> I mean, we only played it like three times, but I'm still undefeated, baby. <laughs> Crusader Kings is next. We haven't played it, um, but I've heard good things. And then we finally got Cryptex. We got it. We got Woo! it. <laughs> so this was a Kickstarter where the company went out of business and another company came along. And I wish I could remember their name because it'd be nice to give them credit. And all you had to do is repay the shipping, which makes sense for the new company since they had nothing to do with the original Kickstarter. And they made it available. The only thing I don't like about it is they were supposed to create an app. And instead of creating an app, they created like a Google Sheet. So you have to use it a little differently. But we can do that. We have a TV right here, actually, that on a cart that we move around our game room. So that actually works for stuff like that pretty well. And to be clear, generally we don't watch TV while playing games, but it's great for screencasting, stuff like that, mm. for watching YouTube videos of how to play. And then occasionally during baseball season, we will have baseball on. <laughs> you gotta keep it going, you know? Or playoffs, you can't miss the playoffs. <laughs> All right, so what we have, uh, this is a game we haven't played yet, Cult of Storm. There's a little controversy in this Kickstarter because they have not delivered the expansions yet. Um, and they say they will, so we'll see. But they haven't posted in a while, so we'll see. Um, Cytosis is next, another one on our shelf of opportunity. Um, then we have D6 Dungeon. This is kind of a cool game. You have like a, a Connect Four kind of board in between yeah. the two players. And you put your dice in the slots, and so one sub person on one side sees one thing, and the person on the other side sees the other. It is so cool, and it's actually really fun. I really enjoy enjoy this game. We weren't sure if it was going to be any good. In fact, I feel like the reviews maybe weren't that great, but we really like this game. Yeah, it's really fun, and it's it's just cool. It's you so know? clever. It's neat. It's very clever. Um, and then we have the mosque, which we just got, so we haven't played it yet. But this is uh, an abstract ish game, about, like about Damask printing, uh, fabric printing and stuff. So, um, Darwinots, which I think is a much better game than most people probably realize. Mm -hmm. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a great game. I'd say it's a good game. Um, it's probably at least in the six to seven range. Yeah, it should be. And uh, it, the, the Kickstarter took a while to deliver, so it might have hurt the ratings on BGG a little bit because of that. All right, we've learned since last time, and I'm sitting, not squatting, uh, just to give my body a little bit of a break. So sore from all the box moving. Next shelf, Daybreak. No idea, don't remember what it is. Kickstarter of some sort, we back. I'm sure it's gonna be very exciting. Day Bulgari, uh, Eloquentia. Daybreak is a cooperative game from Matt uh, Leacock. Oh. And it's, but it's about environmental um, oh, that energy. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, green energy. That's really great, I'm glad we bought that. It's on BGA, but I haven't played it yet. Yeah, see, I don't remember stuff until we play it. Day Bulgari, Eloquentia, this one I'm actually pretty excited about. We haven't played. Dead Man's Cabal. This game is fantastic. And it is so thematic. You've got bones and skulls that are, uh, the pieces are bones and skulls. It is so great for spooky season. It's a really fun game. You're basically throwing a party and trying to get dead people to, to come to it. Um, it's just gorgeous. Does not get enough buzz. Uh, really great game. All right. This whole thing, I'm not gonna take it off, is by one of our most favorite designers. Um, we did not give him space on the, at the beginning. Maybe we should have, but we didn't. Um, and that is John DeClaire, and this is uh, 
uh, Dead Reckoning. It's this whole thing. Like there's, you can see, this is the game. There's expansions, 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 expansions. It's the whole thing. So we gotta play that so we can make some room here. All right, Defenders of the Realm. I don't remember what there was to say about this. We've got a couple boxes. Jane, you want to remind me why I'm excited about this? Because I know I am. It's an adventure game. Um, you knew the someone who knew the designer. That's it? right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, this is his most famous um, uh, game. What's his name? It begins with an L. Richard Lanius. Richard Lanius. Yeah. Um, his uh, niece actually works in the food security community um, in Pittsburgh, and so I know her from that. We actually. Um, for a nonprofit designed like total crap, but we designed a like board game activity to, to show off at a, at a fair um, or a thing. Uh, so I'm excited about that. This is actually a pretty famous one of the early uh, adventure games. Deja Vu, Fragments of Memory. Um, we played it. Is that all I have to say about that? I don't remember. You just don't remember it? Yeah, or? so I think. I enjoyed it. Okay. I think. Yeah, I don't remember much about it. I think when we were talking about the Keeper Call, I wanted to play it again because I just don't remember it at all. Mm. And then Destinies, which is a one of those sort of like sandbox, open adventure games, uh, is... Episodic? Yeah, episodic. Um, this had a lot of buzz the year it came out. Uh, we got it. We played. We managed to play one or two episodes. Again, Jane was really sick. Um, this is like one of the few table games we played that year, so I'm very excited to get back to it. Now we're down to the little second to last uh, row on the shelf, and uh, I don't know. That's a really good cubby you got there. This is a really good cubby I got here. I'm not, well, first off we have Detective. <laughs> I'm not going to pull it out for reasons. There's like uh, multiple copies here and stuff's going to fall. Um, and Detective is such a great game. We've had such a good experience. We built our whole murder wall with post-its and uh, pictures and everything. And then we have one of our favorite little games, Dice Miner. Oh, love this it so game much. is really, really, a lot of people who have played it really like it. Um, and I think uh, more people need to play it. Really fun. If you don't mind, it is certainly luck heavy. So it's a dice chucker. So if you don't yeah. mind a little luck heaviness, um, you know, Dice Miner is really good. And it's quick. So if you need a good quick filler, it's a good one. And this is a really interesting game. I want to take a sec to talk about Dice Realms. If you've never played Dice Realms, it's it's basically, it's dice crafting. So uh, John DeClaire has done card crafting, but this is where you, you have basically these cubes and you add different faces to the dice. And each game is going to be different because your dice are going to be different. It's really interesting. It works a little bit like a deck builder. Yeah, definitely. Um, but with dice. Yeah, it's really interesting. Such a clever, uh, such a clever mechanic. And I love it when designers do something like that. When they take a, a familiar concept like a, a card or a die, die, die. <laughs> <laughs> or one of those. Um, and they and they build off it and do something incredibly unique. So then we have Dice Settlers, which is a game that kind of disappeared off the uh, radar. It really did. Uh, but this is uh, it's Turchy, right? Yeah, it's David Turchy. And it's a really good dice crafting game. It's got a tech tree. Love it. Uh, dice placement game is what I should say, not crafting. I, dice Realms is still in my head. Yep. Uh, Dice Theme Park, which we have not played yet, and this is an expansion for it. Uh, and then we have Die Mocker, which we just had to own. You know, this is a classic uh, politics board game, and we just had to own it. So, And that's the reprint, which is also why we bought it at that time, because there was an opportunity as they were reprinting right. it, right? New yep. edition. Um, then we have Die of the Dead, and it's just a game just we haven't gotten to the shelf yet. But it's a small game, so it shouldn't be too much longer. And then... We have Dinosaur Island and Dinosaur Island Roaring Right and Dinosaur World. Now we've played everything but Dinosaur World. Now we love Dinosaur Island. We rented it from a local board game tavern, which unfortunately closed because they opened right before the pandemic. Oh, terrible. Talk about bad luck. Yeah. And um, they ended up not making it. And uh, uh, But we did rent that game from them and 
We loved it. We so, loved and it. And we went out and got the Kickstarter edition of Dinosaur Island and never looked back. Yeah, once we played, we, they had the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition. And I said, I can't own anything less than this. So, just princess. I'm a princess when it comes to my games. So, after Dinosaur Island, we have... Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to regret bringing this out because stuff's falling around it. Distilled! <laughs> we are excited for this. We actually played variations of this during playtesting. Um, early enough that um, Jen broke the version that we were playing. <laughs> And, Which is uh, good. That's what you want to do in playtesting. Yeah, that's what. You, well, yeah, you want to try to. Uh, you want the game to hold up to it. But. Right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then we have Dixit, which is a classic, classic party game. So uh, this is not working. Okay, that was fun. Uh, so over here we have Dog Park, which I won't pull out, but it's a really fun game. And then we have. Another alcohol game, which we are excited to try, Dom Pierre. This is the expansion. The full game is bigger, um, but it's out here. And another one I got you a long time ago, but we haven't played, and that is Dominant Species. We've literally had that on the table multiple times, and we just have not gotten to it. Just hasn't happened. Nope, but we will, because it looks like so much fun. All right, we just have one more row of games here. So what else we got, dear? Okay, I'm on the floor again. We'll see how this goes. Uh, you can't quite see over here, but that's okay. We've got dominations. We've got, um, whoa, that is packed in tight. I don't think I can get that out. We've got dominations and several um, expansions for it. This is a game we're super excited to get to the table. Um, I know Tom Vassell loves it, and I've heard a lot of other really good things about it. Um, so, yeah. Then we've got dimensions, pop-up mystery manner. That one is going to be very thematic during spooky season. Can't wait to play it. And Draft and Write Records, um, we have actually a really big vinyl collection too, mostly because Jane um, was a college DJ, um, both in college and out of college, and loves records. So this is super excited. We love this theme. Um, Warriors of Crin was a really thoughtful present from actually somebody in my office um, that uh, for Christmas this year, it's a Dungeons and Dragons game. Um, I'm slowly building up to make sure that my entire office is nothing but gamers. Give me about another year and we'll be there. Um, we've got Dune, uh, which we haven't played. It's on our shelf of opportunity. Um, this game, it, people are so excited about this game, so I really can't wait to play it. Um, we also love Doom. We're big science fiction fans, so that should be fun. Dungeon Alliance, um, which dungeon crawler. is a dungeon crawler. Um, have we, I don't think we've played it, have we? Nope. Okay. It's scooching forward. Um, we like our dungeon crawlers, so we're really excited to get some more of these to the, sh to the table. Um, I can't see what this is. Oh, yeah, more Dungeon Fighter. Lots of it. No, dungeon Fighter is a different game, dude. <laughs> dungeon, Dungeon, Dungeon. It's all the same. It's like City Game. All right, we've got Dungeon Fighter, which is a different game. Don't make that mistake. It's a different game than Dungeon Alliance. And it just came in. So. Yeah, it just came in. Of course, that's the Alliance fight. Um, we've got Legend of Drizzit or Driz. Another D and D game, uh, board game. Really like those. Um, I just freaking like to fight, fight baddies. Love the dungeon crawls and the fighting games. They're so much fun. Um, I really like the cooperative ones best, but even the non-cooperative are good as long as we're not fighting each other. Um, dungeon Dice in Danger. This is a roll and write from Richard Garfield. It is really, really good. Um, it is probably more chunky than you want to play with somebody who's not a gamer. Um, but if you are a gamer and you like roll and writes, that is a good one. Dwellings of Elderville. That is a big girl. Uh, have not played it yet. Again, um, it was a Kickstarter we back that came in just before Jane got sick or around the time that she got sick. So we haven't had the bandwidth. We are, we're working on it. We can't wait to play those. Earth. Oh, very excited for this one. I know this is one of the hits of last year. Um, is it last year or the year before? Last year. Last year. This was one of the hits of last year. It was on a lot of people's top 10. Um, we have not played it yet, but we are excited too. I can't see what's next. Earthborn Rangers. Earthborn Rangers. Ooh, that's exciting. What is it? <laughs> Earthborn Rangers is a legacy game 
um, about exploration, I guess. Uh, anyway, it was a very eco publishing and uh, eco friendly publishing, and uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It looks really cool. You can see uh, this is one of the things I love is when they no longer do shrink and they just put a, like a sticker on it. I think that's really smart. Um, it's a really easy way to be eco friendly. And I like to see that. And then finally, Eclipse, Eclipse. Da, second dawn for the galaxy, which is which is giant. I'm not gonna grab it. Um, we're just gonna leave it there. Um, and that is the conclusion of our second shelf section with Eclipse. Well, that was fun, except for the part where I had to get up off the floor. <laughs> yep. Well, so that is the second part of our collection, and we got all the way up to E. e. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Well, you know, um, we have a lot of games, so we yeah. have a lot more to go. Uh, I have a question. What's that? So, of all the games we haven't played, which game would you suggest we play next? Yeah. Where would you start? This was your shelf of opportunity. Where would you start? Yeah. Let us know what you think, because uh, we're trying to decide. So, all right. yep. All right. Uh, remember, every day that you game is a holiday. <laughs>